Hi, it's time for Green Shorts. It's time to set up my simple BSFL composting bin. Stay tuned. I've got this in a nice spot back here in the backyard. Got it on a little bit of a tilt here so that the rainwater will run off this side of the roof. And we're gonna set this up using some food waste from a local restaurant. Because I've got multiple composters going, now I'll have two soldier fire larva composters as well as a couple worm composters. The food waste that my family generates is not enough to sustain all these guys. So. I've actually go across the street to a local restaurant and get their food waste. The beauty of solidified larva is that they will scale to the amount of food that's available. So you make more, they make more. So this food waste has a little bit of garbage in it just because they didn't pre-sort it for me this time. Usually they will do that for me and I don't have to deal with sorting out all of the plastic and straws and, and skewers. So let me do that right now. As you can see, a soldier fly has already found the bin. Of course it helps that my other bin is about five feet away. Normally I use a plastic glove to do this sorting if I have to, but you can also use a grocery bag. And I just used it to move some worms into my worm composter, which is why it's messy. So you just wanna make sure that it doesn't have any holes in it where you're gripping it. But if you ask your restaurant ahead of time to pre-sort their food waste for you, you don't have to deal with this. Got burgers in here, got chicken, got some bacon. Lemons are okay for soldier fire larva. You don't wanna use don't want to use lemons or citrus in a worm composter. I pull the wooden skewers out also, the straws come out. But yeah, there are gonna be some happy maggots here in just a few minutes. Here's the soldier fly now. All right, I'll get any more trash that I can find later once the, they expose it. There's an adult right there looking for a place to lay eggs. You see the house flies have found it as well. They'll probably get started in their egg laying and then the soldier fire larva will take over. I'm gonna help that process out by seeding this with larva from my other bin. Whenever I handle soldier fire larva, I'm gonna wear a glove. Here you can see some fellas working down here. Just gonna grab a handful of maggots here. Ooh, they're wiggling in there. Move this over to the new bin. Let's get a few more. Note that this adult female is not gonna lay eggs uh, on the compost itself. She's gonna find a little crevice up on the edge of the tarp or uh, between the tarp and the our plastic there to lay her eggs. The eggs will hatch and then they'll crawl down into the compost. These soldier flies have found this so quickly just because I've already got a bin nearby. If you're starting from scratch, uh, they may have a little harder time finding it, but they will. And usually what you'll see is housefly larva coming first and they uh, will lay their eggs, they'll hatch, and, and housefly larva look like grains of rice and they wiggle a lot faster. Solar fry larva look more like aliens. They're segmented, they're, their movements are a lot more rhythmic. Corrugated cardboard also provides 
the perfect crevice for a female soldier fly to lay her eggs. So I'm gonna put some of this strategically around the bin so that they can find this and lay eggs in here. Put some up here on the back and then also just gonna lay some here right on the front. When I close this down, there are spots right there to lay eggs in. Part of my reason for leaving the ends open was to allow access for the adults. Just like we see her doing right now. Flying right in. Of course that corrugated is right there ready for her to lay eggs in. I've had a problem with ants getting into the bin on my other bin so I've just created a simple water gap on each leg using just a variety of things I had around the yard. We'll prevent the ants from crossing that gap as long as there's nothing else touching the bin. So setting up my soldier fly larva bin is just that simple. Of course the construction is a little more involved and you can watch the build video by clicking on the link above. But I also thought I'd take this time to show you how my bin sort of starts up in the spring. So from the time it starts to get warm enough that solid fry larvae that have been in stasis over the winter start to hatch out and they come back to the bin because they can find it from the remnants that were left from the previous season. So here take a look at this footage just to show you what to see or what to look for in your soldier fry larva composting bins as they warm up and start up again in the spring. So it's been a few days since I let these guys get going and you can see that they've done a lot of work on this food waste. I want to get my hands in there. You can also see that there's some pretty serious egg masses over here on the side and here's uh, some babies crawling for the compost. There's some more up there too that are crawling in. One of the challenges of this design is I don't want them laying eggs over here because that means these guys can't actually climb down into the compost. So maybe move these eggs over to here. So these eggs right here will get in just fine. But the ones that are over here across this gap will have a difficult time. So, although there are plenty here to get the job done. I'm also seeing that we have some harvested down here in the, in the bin. Can't really see what's happening here in the black one, but at least in the blue one over here I can see that there are probably about a couple hundred in there. One of the problems I'm having right now with this particular bin is ant infestation. The fire ants are getting in here. Now they don't necessarily, uh, they won't eat the soldier fry larvae when they're big. I'm not sure. I haven't seen them carrying off the little ones. So I don't know for sure if that's a problem. But I just don't want a potential competitor inside the composter with the soldier fry larva. So what I'm going to do is to start up my new composter, I'm going to move a lot of the stuff over from this one. And then I'm going to clean this out, wash it down, and then restart it. Also had carpenter ants getting in here. They're mainly after the bread. So I transferred a bunch of the eggs to this magnolia leaf. And I'm just going to let that sit right there. And once they start to crawl off, they'll hop right down into the, into the compost. Alright, let's see what we got a couple days later here. I'm gonna unload the bins. It's a little trickier to do one hand in here, but. Already got the other side open. A lot more on this side.
spiders love to build webs down in here and then they can catch any adults that hatch out. So every couple days I need to clear the spider webs out. Use a stick. And if I can catch the spider too and relocate him or her. Yeah, there he is right there. All right, so it's a few hours later, it's night, and I'm back out to check on the soldier flies, see if we have any migrating. There's a few more, a few more down in there from this afternoon when I emptied them. I also wanted to check out the bread I put in here this afternoon. The remnants of my bread bowl from lunch. And I just easily just carefully pull this back and show you what's underneath. This is, I can feel some heat coming off this. They're definitely this is the frenzy when they get moving. Right, cover them back up, let them do their thing. Just put this bin back in so there's nothing in there yet. Doesn't look like these guys have hatched yet. But that should be soon. Still have my ant problem here. The fire ants are cohabitating here with the soldier fly larva. But I definitely don't want that happening. Just because they're competing for food. I found out about soldier fly larva by accident. I had a worm composting bin, it was outside, and I started seeing these creatures in there and I didn't know what they were. Um, I at first tried to separate them from the worms by hand and they just came back. And I did some research and found out that they were actually black soldier fly larva and that they were also an amazing composter. Um, Murray Hallam, who is an aquaponics guru from Australia, uses them as a food source for his aquaponics fish. I feed into my goldfish, and then of course they're going next door to my neighbor's chickens. An amazing food source, like 30% fat, 40% protein. They even have some mitochondria stuff happening that adds antimicrobial properties to a chicken's diet. I don't know the details on that, but there's some amazing research that's been done on black soldier fly larvae. The adults don't even have mouths, so they were clearly made to compost and then move and um, replicate as fast as possible. Amazing creatures, and it's awesome to watch. So I've got a bucket over here that I just took out of the other bin. I'm gonna walk next door and feed the chickens, and we'll show you how that looks. Here's the output of a about four days of what my composter is doing right now. You can see that these are all black, which means they're pre-pupa. When they get to this stage, they actually they have crawled out on their own from the compost and it makes it super easy to capture them and to let them do as much work composting as possible. All right, let's take these guys next door and watch the chickens munch. As long as this bin stays dry, they cannot climb the sides. As soon as it gets wet, they can have the surface tension needed to climb up the side of this bin and get out. I've had that happen before. 
They're starting to recognize me. Hey birds. The first time I brought these over, they weren't sure what to do. They were very tentative about eating. But eventually they did, and now that they know what they're getting, they're happy to see me. So they'll get down in the, the bedding here on the ground. Uh, but the birds are made to scratch these things out, so. I'm guessing I had 500 to 1,000 there, and they'll eat them all in about 10 minutes. This is a perfect way to add protein to a chicken's diet. Isn't that right? Well, they've about finished off those larvae. There's just a few left that they'll have to scratch to get. I wanted you to see the final result and the reasons for the fact that I compost with soldier fly larva because it allows me to complete the cycle. So from food waste, food consumption, food waste, then capturing that waste, turning it into soldier fly larva, which then become food for chickens. And I actually have a great little bargain here with my neighbors. I give them bugs and they give me eggs. Now these guys, or these ladies, aren't laying just quite yet, but they should be laying here in a month or two, and then I get to enjoy the bounty of my neighbor's chickens. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green, and save a little green by doing it yourself. In this case, I'm saving money on eggs by composting with soldier fly larvae and turning them into food for these chickens. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share and subscribe for a new Green Shorts DIY video almost every Friday.